when you, you have that uh, pure intent that you want to experience your angels and guides because of that relationship and that just love. Expecting nothing. You know, immediately you have you have expectations, eh? you don't get what you're expecting. Because, because the universe itself is a universe of polarity. Everything is accompanied mm -hmm. by its opposite. When you go, you are seeking even God. If you are seeking God with expectations, any expectations, forget about this work. Seek of God is not is not of expect I, like you are seeking God because you are expecting this or that or you are expecting your financial you are, you are expecting a financial abundance you are you are expecting your your security in your job at your job place. Seek for God is just, it's, a, it's supposed to be just seek for God out of love of God because you are one with God, oneness. It has no agenda. So to experience the, those spirit angels, spirit guides and angels, eh? you just have to have that pure intent that mm -hmm. expect nothing. The pure intent is of love. Because the pure and conditional love expects expect nothing in return. So everything, even for not only angel, even the angel and guide, eh? yeah. wanting even to when when you are even your other relationship with your friends at your workplace your relationships with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, with your spouse. It is a relationship. It should be an, a neutral relationship. That which, that which has, is, 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 has the foundation of the love that expects nothing in return. Even your boyfriend or if it is your spouse, you love them expecting nothing in return. Nothing. Because true love expects nothing. True love is the love of God. Love is God. God is what love is. And because above all, that which was before everything came was love. And it is not biased. The reason why it expects nothing is because everything is itself. It is in the state of that state where it is a, it has total fulfillment. Everything is itself. When you are everything, when you are everything, this is what happens. When you are everything, you expect nothing because you lack nothing. This is what God is. You, we, we, God, everything is within God. Nothing exists outside of God. So God, God expects nothing outside of himself, nothing. And guess what? That is what we are supposed to be. That is what we are supposed to be expecting nothing from outside of us. It's a godly aspect. Nothing outside of us. So true love expects nothing in return. When you seek God, even seeking God, you are, you are supposed to expect nothing. Because the seeking of God is out of love of God. Just that love.
Hello, Dr. Sheila. I think uh, we lost uh, uh, Salim. Why don't, you, why don't you take over? And to when he's back. I'm back right now. I'm just working. I was at a function. But I know you come right now. Okay, I think I think Salim is back. Can anyone hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Good disconnect. Yes. So I was. I was talking about the the true love of God, the pure essence of God. Because our sister here asked a question. Huh? This is uh, many of you joined the letter. With, I started uh, with her, and uh, she was asking how to. She is always being told that there is that uh, there are three angels around us at each and every moment. And uh, the grander truth is that, eh? Just wanted to know how to experience the angels. And uh, that is where we started from. And I was telling her, when uh, we are seeking everything, eh, we have to put zero expectations because the true love expects nothing. The true love, love is of God because God is love. That love itself is God. It expects nothing in return. It is just itself because it lacks nothing. Same as God, everything within itself Nothing exists, exists outside of himself. And uh, therefore, because nothing exists of himself, outside of himself, expects nothing outside of himself. Because everything is within himself in, in the state of completeness. And so, Only to experience the angels, but Senior, to experience I... good. Love. Sorry? Yeah. Can I comment about love? Yes, comment. Comment, Sheila. So, I one of the things that we have to remember as individuals is that we are an extension of who God is. So, we are an extension of love. That is the first thing that we have to walk in the consciousness of that. We are an extension of who God is and what God is. And if God is love, we are an extension of that which is love, that which is of God. So always, first of all, as we seek to know what love is, or as we seek to know, to experience what love is, we have to start from that standpoint, that within us there is the in divine enablement that gives us the ability to love as God would love. So many a times when we look at ourselves, we feel like uh, we feel an incapacitation to love as God would have us love, but we forget that within is the ability to love. That's one. And then on the on the other end, on the other hand, when you're talking about expecting nothing. One thing we have to do is to know that as an extension of source energy or as an extension of God, then when you and I walk or seek for love, we have to do, go about it from a standpoint of fullness. And how does that operate? It comes from the aspect of, first of all, drawing into ourselves, drawing into working on ourselves, working to be the best that we can and the fullness of that which we are created to be so that as you are seeking when you're coming into this relationship you're not coming into this relationship 
as a person that is seeking or that is a person as a person that would like to withdraw but you are coming as a person that already understands that you have the fullness of who you are that which you are that which is within you so that when you come as a full being or in your element or in the essence of who you are which is a channel or a manifester of love then you're coming with a place of from a standpoint of desiring to extend or to pour out of the fullness of what you are or what you carry so then when you're doing that you are now flowing in the fullness of who god is which is love and who of which you are which is love and that is what you give people now when we think of ourselves why is there such a dysfunctionality when it comes to love one we don't come into these relationships whether they are intimate whether they are platonic whatever the case may be we don't get into we don't come into these relationships from a place of fullness we are already dysfunctional we are dysfunctional in a lack of understanding we don't know who we are we don't know what we are that is the first aspect and then even when we like when we you know yourself you know yourself as an individual for example you can be a person who's very selfish a person who's selfish only thinks of always getting 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 that's not what the essence of of being a, an individual is all about you can't just be a person who always keeps on taking 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 you have to also be a person that gives so unfortunately many of us never give ourselves that time never give ourselves that challenge to work on ourselves that's you have to keep on, keep on looking at yourself and you say what are the gaps that i have as an individual what are my gaps what are my gaps my gaps are i've realized that one i'm selfish i've realized that i'm too judgmental i'm always looking at how this person is like this that person is like that that's not love when you are looking and you see that which is seemingly and i, I repeat seemingly lacking in somebody else is actually a mirror of what is lacking in you so god when god looks at us god doesn't doesn't look at us and he's like you know you have a problem in this he has a problem in this he sees everything good because when god looks at us he is good and because he's good when he sees us or when god sees us or when this divine source energy or divine entity sees us it only sees us in our fullness it only sees us in our perfectionness it only sees us in the essence of what it is and that is who we are because we are an extension of what god is so my challenge would be to have us calibrate to the point of going back to basics are we going back to basics you have to begin we have to begin to take stock of ourselves we have to begin to look at ourselves and really take a critical self introspection go deep within go draw within draw into yourself because when you walk in your fullness, when you are so full of love, this love that is patient, this love that is kind, this love that is gracious, this love that is merciful, this love that is non-gentle, non-judgmental, this love that endures, this love that, you know, that cares, that sacrifices, that gives, that always goes over and beyond. When you are now flowing from a fullness of that which love is, then when you come into this relationship whether it is a marriage whether it is a friendship whether whatever the state may be you're not coming into this from an aspect of dysfunctionality or from an aspect of having um a gap or ha being having a um let's say that you have aspects that are not really the manifestation of love in you so that when you come together with these people you come in the essence of who you are you come in the essence of what you are which is you are you're an extension of source or expansion extension of god or divine life or the spirit of god and so when you come into this um this relationship you don't basically look at the other person you look at yourself you begin to ask yourself what am i bringing because many a times you'll find for example for those of us that are wives that you're looking at your husband and you're thinking you don't love me you don't love me you know you're not there for me you know you're not doing this for me it's always that selfish already that isn't what love is all about that isn't the essence of who god is so 
to challenge ourselves to now begin to turn our mirror inward and take responsibility of ourselves and asking ourselves, so what have I been able to, what am I bringing to the table? What am I having on offer to this individual? Because many a times we're always asking, what have you done for me? How is this going to benefit me? And then, and then, and me. But then we should flow, we should go in the flow of uh, um, operating through life from a full cup. You know, from the overflow is what we have people feed or drink out of us. What does that mean? Feel so much, feel yourself so much with the aspect of, of love. Feel yourself so much with the aspect of or aspects or, or, the, or the characteristic of enjoying yourself, giving yourself every good and perfect thing. First of all, yourself. Do it for yourself so that by the time you're coming, then you are pouring out. You have taken enough for yourself, you feel yourself, you love yourself, you you desire the best for yourself, you have ministered to yourself, you've been mm, gracious to yourself in terms of the in terms of the um, in terms of the gift of love that is in you, and then now you're coming to pour out by giving that person that you are connected with whether it's a stranger, whether it's a friend, whether it's a sibling, whether it's a spouse, whether it, whatever the state may be, then you are actually operating from the aspect of fullness of what love is and who love is, or, or who you are in God and what God is so that people can experience just the essence of the love of God in you. So let's challenge ourselves to tap into, let's tap into the fullness of what God is we are limiting God because of the expectations we have placed on people. Some of these expectations that we place on people, but ideally is just an indication of the dysfunctionality that we have within ourselves. Because you'll find that for us as people, you will want this person to make you feel worthy, to make you feel loved, to make you feel, you know, precious or valuable. You have a challenge in your self-esteem. You have a challenge in your mindset, in how it is that you're looking at yourself, how it is that you're perceiving yourself, what it is, how it is that you see yourself. You have a dysfunctionality that you need to work on or that you need to correct. Because I'm not responsible at the end of the day. I keep on telling myself and I'm telling people very, very loudly these days that it has hit home. I say I'm only charged with the responsibility of my own actions and my handling of situations or my reactions or what it is that I do, my actions. It is me who's responsible for me. I'm not responsible for anyone else and they are not responsible to me. They are responsible over themselves. So if I'm feeling like there's any aspect of, of me not feeling like I'm validated or I'm appreciated, it's not the, it's not the responsibility of the person that you feel like the onus is on them to make you feel valued or for you to be loved or for you to be appreciated. The onus is on you, first of all, to work on yourself. We draw in and we tell ourselves, okay, so where, where am I looking at things wrongly? Where am I seeing these things wrongly? Where am I miss, miss, where have I been able to um, perceive myself with a, with, with a miss, you know? Where, where am I lacking in my self-perception? as an extension of love. Am I really that which love is? If I judge, am I, am I love? Or if I, if I, if I speak, uh, you know, the way we can insult people, is that love when I'm always just demanding more out of you, but never really demanding more out of myself, is that love? Okay, when now, and then we have this thing as human beings that, and I, I believe as, as, um, as a person who has been a believer, will will say, you know, let me just love you with the love of God. That is, you know, that's the worst kind of gaslighting you've ever seen anybody pull on anyone. That I'll tell you, you know, I, I kind of like project. I don't want to take responsibility. Instead of me taking this as a challenge to look at myself and say, okay, it can't be that this situation is like this. It's now a function of me, myself, you, yourself, who's always reacting. For example, if I'm reacting wrongly, then it's not, the problem is not the situation. The problem is myself because I tell people every time, life is just 10% what happens to you 
but 90% how you handle or react to that situation. So if you're always feeling like you're out of sync when it comes to the situation or the circumstance that you're in, then it's indicative that you need to be able to look at this situation, look at it from the um, from the from the uh, from the standpoint of love, and ask yourself, what would Jesus do? What would God do? What would the Spirit of God have you do? And then rise up to the occasion and do it. But our projections that we throw out there to people is not a function of the people. It's actually an uh, it's actually an indication of ourselves and the dysfunctionality that we have within us. So I would I would just encourage us, even as we are talking, if we understood the principle of what love is, and, and even as I'm saying, it's not that I'm perfect. All of us still, we have not perfected it because we have not been able to flow fully in the essence of who God is. And by the way, when you look at how God, um, what God's love is all about or what the spirit of love is all about, you realize that we haven't aced it and we are still having some aspects of dysfunctionality within us that we have to keep on challenging ourselves to grow into, to morph into, to develop ourselves in. Because then the more we do it every other time, the more you are put on notice and you realize that, hey, I'm so far, I'm so far, even when you feel you have arrived, you have arrived to this particular destination, you realize that no, the journey into love and the journey of love begins afresh. So let's draw in, let's draw into God, let's draw into the spirit of God within us, let's tap into the fullness of what love is. There's still uh, a lot of work, let's do a lot of work within ourselves. Then as we come to these relationships, we are coming to these relationships from a place of knowing ourselves fully, loving ourselves fully, being gracious with ourselves, because if I'm judgmental with somebody else, I'm also very judgmental with myself. Because if you have received the love of God for yourself, God is gracious. God doesn't keep track of evil. God does not, God is not the type of God that will come back to you and like starts telling you, you know, in 1986, you did this, you did that. And yet comes back and tells you, I love you. No, 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 no. Then this is not what God is. And that is not what the spirit is all about. So yeah, let's keep transforming. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sheila. That was a nice one. Eh? Um, and uh, 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 truly speaking, eh, we have never known what the uh, what uh, love is because uh, love does only one thing: love gives. Love does only one thing: love gives. Love can. Love never takes. Eh? Love never takes. You can never take something out of love. You can never. But you can give out of love. Love only gives. It is a state of giving out. In that state of giving out, and then it becomes an expansion. This is what evolution is. The word evolve has got six letters. The first four letters, when you read them, they are, they spell love. Then out of the six again, take the last four letters. It is the word love again. It is what evolution is. Evolution is because evolution is just uh, just that state of expansion, state of giving out itself, where expansion comes. The state of God, evolution, giving out as much as you give, you expand. It's not giving man, it's giving of that love. Because love is a, it's God by itself and is it, the one which is holding the whole creation flow. Because the universe is just a state of, it's just a state of continuous 
evolution and creation because it is ever expanding. That state of ever expanding is the, the state of love, that which gives, just gives. Just gives, but it is very hard for us as humans to say that we love because as much as we try, we have never loved. We might have said we have loved, but we have never loved. We might, we are singing for God, let me tell you, every day. Praising God, singing good songs for God. And we proclaim that we love God, but we have never known what love is. That's why I tell people of all the characteristics, all the characteristics of God you have put in your religious books, wash them down the drain. God has got only one aspect, his love, gives, has got only one aspect, being the source. The source is that which gives. Being the source. And that is the grander reason why we are in this planet at this particular time, in this season of the shift. We were here to love. And we will be going round, round and around fasting and having overnight prayers, asking God the purpose of being in this planet. When your Bible says ye are God, what is the work of God? Only to love. It's written there in the Bible, but you still want to know why you are here. You are here to act, to practice being God. That's why you are told you are God. You are here to practice being God. And you cannot be you cannot even experience god if you cannot act like god because that state so you experience god by itself there is nothing let me tell you guys you can have thousands of prayers you can do dry fast 120 days but you can never experience God until you act like one. You can never experience God until you act like God. Because that acting like God is itself experiencing God. So how do we, in our daily lives, do we act like God? Not God, do we act like God just to love, to give? You, we us being there to give. People don't want our man. Are we there to give people company? Our ears, our time, are we, Acting like God that gives. How are we giving out time and everything? Are we being the source in the, in in situations where there is where there are tumults we, we bring peace? Everywhere there is chaos, you bring calmness. Are we the source of all that? Because that is what God is. Where there they are tumult, you bring. Where there is war, you bring peace. Where there is hatred, you bring love. Where is there there is head, uh, there is there is unforgiveness. He brings 
forgive and forgiveness will bring forgiveness. It's being the source of the gifts of God. The gifts of God are not cards. Gifts of God are not good houses. Last time I, I was telling Sheila, hey, hey, don't go to church. Don't take your testimony anywhere when you go and took a car and you're still paying for it. You're still paying for your mortgage. Okay, it's a mansion, but you're still paying it. But it, you, you sweated for it or you worked sleepless nights for everything. Don't give that testimony. Think of the spirit. Teleport first. If you want to give a testimony, teleport. Those are the things of the spirit. Think of higher densities and dimensions. They are not called physicality. In higher dimensions, they don't need houses. They are everywhere like air. Be everywhere like air, then give a testimony. You don't get a physical car, a car and a house, and then you think you are a, you have a testimony. You have nothing. That is what makes you blind. But when the disciples saw that guy who was blind and they asked Jesus, why is this guy blind? Was he born out of his mama, mama's womb, like that? Was it out of the sins of his ma, his mother, or his sins? And Jesus said, "It's neither of them." And they were surprised. And this is what he told them: He spit on the earth, showing them. You see. This the artery thing. Then he took the speech with the artery thing and he showed them these artery things are the ones you have put into your eyes. And he placed the speech plus the art in the sand and he told the blind guy, go and wash that. And when he washed, he started seeing. This is what Jesus was portraying that physicality is what makes people blind they think we can only see not knowing that that there are those things which cannot be seen and yet and yet very present which are eternal we are stuck to the physicality of the things we can see, things which come and go, anything of matter, anything of flesh, anything of matter, anything of art. Matter is material, matter is art, matter art, anything of mother art comes and go. It never stays even the same, not even coming and go. It never stays even the same. Everything changes because it's not different. Everything changes. That's why we cannot love. Love gives. It expects nothing. It is in the state of completeness. When you, you love your spouse, you expect nothing from them. Nothing. Let me tell you. If you have your wife, you, you expect nothing. Bishop, you expect nothing from your wife. Nothing. You are just to be, you, you are just to be there out of love. Nothing. Not that you come from work. I want you expect some food. When you go home, nah. Thing. This is what true love is. It expects nothing. It gives. You don't even expect. You just 
love your spouse, even you don't even have expectations that they are going to love you back. No expectations. Love expects nothing because it lacks nothing. And it is what God is. It is the pure essence of God. In the beginning, there was love. In the beginning, there was love. You guess what? The same beginning, the word was, was with love, and the word was love. The same word. The same word manifested into flesh. The same word manifested into physicality. The same word manifested into matter. The, phys- all, the physicality you see is a manifestation of the word, the beginning. The Christ was with God and the Christ was God. And Christ manifested into flesh, into physicality, into material, into the physical realm. And this is what Christ is. Everything is Christ. Therefore, this is what Christ sees everything. It sees everything as Christ. Because in the beginning, it was with God and it was God by itself. And it manifested into physicality. Nothing of physicality is not of Christ, is not of the Word. Is was not with God in the beginning. There is nothing which you are seeing in the physicality that was not with God in the beginning. Everything was people. You are not experiencing things. You are not getting things because of evolution. You existed. Before you were born, God knew you. Have you asked yourself, where did he know me? People will tell, will tell you, ah, because he's ever knowing. No, because you existed. Anything which came into physical reality, anything. Even a toilet paper, anything. People, read your Bible. And the word manifested into flesh. It was not about Jesus. It was about the Christ in Jesus. Everything is Christ. Christ is everything as Christ. Christ is everything Christ. God sees everything as God and of God. Everything is godly. Nothing exists. People. Nothing exists outside of God. Nothing exists. Everything is within God. Therefore, everything is godly. Everything, people, everything is good. If you can take it, take it. Everything is godly and not unless, and not unless, not unless you acknowledge and see everything as good. You'll never experience the kingdom of God, which is now and even that which is to come. Never, never, you will never experience God. Immediately you separate God. That is not God, people. Immediately you separate God. That is not God because God cannot be separated. That if and if everything is within God. Everything is godly. 
If he immediately separates with Yes, the God is connected back. And so, it is a very, this journey is not, it's not easy as many people think it is very hard. And this is what religion was supposed to be, what religion was supposed to be, turning back to the source. Religa is a Latin word which means journey. Religa. Religion comes from the Latin word religa, which means turning back or reconnecting back to the source. Meaning that we were connected before. And in one way or another, we got disconnected. Now we are supposed to be connecting back to the truth. This is what to be. This is what spirituality is. Many people are wondering what spirituality is. Spirituality is turning back to the source. It is what the exact definition of religion, which religion is, comes from. Exactly. Turning back to the source. It is very hard to love. We are trying. So far, so good. But no one has loved. Stop singing that you love God. You never love God. I think that human love can spend 24 hours there. Remember the first day you fall, you fell in love. If you wanted to live, to to even give that person a minute, you wanted to be them, to be with them, full time. That is true love. That is true love. So when you say you love God, give us evidence that a hey, no, you don't want even to leave God. Every time you're with God, within God, one with God. So love needs practice. Love needs practice. This love is not that simple love. The one hardest thing, the thing which makes love harder, this thing of love harder, is because this love, this love is not biased. It is not biased. It sees everything as love. I'm telling you, God sees everything as God. When the Bible says, eh, ye are God, let me tell you, yes, you are a God, but you will never become one until you act like one. You never become a driver until you act as one by practicing. Practicing is acting. You never become a chef until you act like one by practicing. This is how you cook. This is how you mix. You never become a pilot until you act in aviation, practicing in aviation. That's the thing. It's written here, God, but you can never become 
like one if you can't act like one. And let me tell you one thing. You can never even act like one if you do not know one. Can never act like God if you do not know God. And the hardest part is that it takes a God to identify a God before knowing a God. So how do you identify? How do you know? Before knowing, how do you identify? How do you become? This is what love is. It's never, it's not an easy, it's, it's not something very easy. The reason why I said initially that there are these characteristics we have given to God, eh? and I told you, no matter where they are written, take them down the drain and flush them. Because God is only one characteristic, love. It is a, this thing is the, it's a pure characteristic of God, that's why no one can be perfect in it. No one. When you, when you, when your, your scriptures tells you God is a jealous God, let me tell you, let me tell you, we can be jealous very easily. Very easily as humans. That is something we don't need even to practice. You just switch on and have jealous. It's not a character of God. When they say God was, was a furious God, uh, it was not we can be furious. We are. When you say God is a judgmental God, hey, hey. we can be judgmental. God is not judgmental because God sees everything as God. The reason why he sees everything as God and everything godly and everything as of God do you know why? It's because I create the light, the darkness, good and the evil. I, the Lord God, create them all. They are all babies of the same. So God sees everything as God. That's why I told you. All character when there is a there is a story, God is like God, my friend. That one I can wipe it with a black marker pen. It's not that. When we say God is love, show me, show me, show me anyone who walked in this planet, who has been in the totality, that totality of the love of God. Show me one. It is very hard because it is the pure character, the pure essence of God. Our God is never a jealous God. Our God is never a judgmental God. And this is what I said, Sheila, I like telling you this thing. When you dump God, the God dumps you back. When you walk in a fearful God, when you walk in the fear of God, you will always attract a frightening God. This is not a lie, people. Are you getting me? Sheila. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. And I think also when, what we what yeah. we have to remember. Sorry, sorry. I thought you had you had you were asking for feedback. No, let me finish. I thought I got disconnected. So when you walk with the, with the fear of God, God, you have a frightening God. We have been taught this, that fear is one of, uh, I don't know, reverence of God. My friend, the opposite of love is fear, people. 
the opposite of love is fear. All the anger, resentment, jealousy, and forgiveness, they are caused by fear. People, when you dump God, God dumps you back. When you walk with the God of wrath, that when you do this, you will attract the wrath of God. You will, he will give you the same, the same amount of God. Immediately you do something wrong, something falls on you, there and there. Where you place God is where God stays. It is not biased, I'm telling you. This is God. God is not biased. He's not this, he's not that. Everything is himself, of himself. That, that's why everything works out for the highest good. You want to experience a great, uh, you, want to, you want to experience a, a furious God? Uh, it works to the highest good, to the highest. You believe in God, he'll give you the same God. The reason why you are told that he are God, you are here to practice this thing called love, no any other drama, people. If you stick to this lane of love, you have found God. All other dramas of first this side, give this, sing this, jump here. People, if you do, forget all the shit you have been taught in this since you came from your mother's womb and practice love. Forget everything. Even the tongues, return them to where they are. The church, return them everywhere. Just walk with the love. See. Just be the love. And see what happens. Love is an energy. This energy of love is something else. People, people do not know God. We do not know what God is. We have been told God is this and that, and God is not this and is not that. Anything? Immediately, God has been defined or de described. That which has been described and defined is not God, because God is above that. Anything you give a definition or describe it, you have given it a finite. Things of the finite have description. Something infinite cannot have a description and a definition because it's ever knowing, ever growing, ever expanding, moving on infinitely. Even that infinite itself, God is above that. People, if this is the highest perspective we are having in this third dimension, that God is infinite. But let me tell you one thing, God is above infinite. God is above infinite. That word infinite, be you ever expanding, is God is above. You can never define God. I say only when someone asks you what, what is God, even you can never defend God and you can never even keep quiet because God is above all definition. And when you do not have definition, God is above that one too. So think about it and know what God is. He's above anything you can speak about him. He's above, he's above that silence you will keep because you have no definition of him. He's above that. That's what God is. So, and you are called to be as God, to act as God, 
to in order to be one with God. But the hardest thing is that it takes a God to identify a God. So this God who is above any description and is above any no description above those two, two things. Be like that. Do you know what is that one? It is. State of being. Like you are just being. You are just in the state of being. State of being which is attached to things, things. even you no, know, it is above aware that which is you know awareness even is something that which is above awareness we have to rise above where we have people let do let us not go with programs we have been used abused and refused Programming, let us refuse. Let even in spirituality, let us give no final definition of what God is. This is the secret. If you give a final definition of God, that is where you will have placed God. Then you will have put your limit of God, and that is your God will not be infinite. Will be finite. God above all, God above all. I'm telling you guys, God above all. Above any definition you can give, God is above that. Immediately you define God, God that, what, that which you have defined is not God. And if you don't have a definition, that quietness you keep, that no answer which you have, God is above that one too. Where you place God is where God stays. To experience God, you have to move with God, people. You have to move with God. Yeah, this are other times. You have to move the speed of God. With God, pace by pace. Not this drama we are doing. Pace by pace. Moving with that speed of God. If you are told you are God, you act like one, become like one. That acting, you experience God and you become like one. Then now you can identify a God because it takes a God to identify a God. Being above everything, even that above everything, God is above that. The reason why God cannot have definition, but even that not having a definition is, a, is even above that, is because What we call God is not an old man up in the on the in the sky, an old man seated on a throne with white beard, with the two books on the left hand and the right side, writing the wrongs and uh, the rewards on the other side, with Jesus seated on the right hand of God. It's never an old man. God is what exists. God is what exists as people. If everything is within God, then existence is what God is. What is existence? 
is life. Life is what God is. Life has no form. It is white, it is black, it is all color at the same time. It is colorless. Life has no color. Life has no color. At the same time, it is all colors. It has no form. At the same time, it is all forms. All forms you see. A car, a house, all forms are life. And yet again, it has no form. It ha life has got no tribe. Yet again, it is all tribes. Has no nationalities. Yet again, it's all nationalities. Has got no race, life. And yet again, it's all races. This is what God is. Life existence. Do you value life? Do you respect life? Do you see everything as God? Everything, people, not things which work. Even the containers you are using in your toilet, do you see them as God? Okay. <laughs> people, I'm telling you one thing. It takes a God to identify a God. If you are seeking to identify God, eh, become like God. Because God sees everything as God. Nothing exists outside of himself. Respect, value to everything. Or this is a rug and this is a nice cloth. This I can iron, this one I cannot iron. People, let me tell you one thing. This is a plastic bottle, I kick it. This is a good bottle, I'm going to keep it for decoration. I thought, people, respect existence. Everything is God, if you are to, to experience God. Value. Value everything. Value everything, even stones. When you see they are just placed here and they have put them together. Value everything, people, if you want to experience the kingdom of God. God can change. People, it can never be attained. People uh, do this and let you attend the kingdom. It can never be attained. It only realize realization of God in everything. Can you experience that? When you realize you come to the realization of that everything is God. That realization that everything you experience God. When you experience tell it all. go you Can anyone hear me? Yeah, we can, can hear you. Any... Yeah, okay. I got disconnected, but I'm back online. So, 
are we ready to realize the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God, that kingdom which that that which is called the kingdom of God, eh? It's not like the the land, the land of milk and honey. It's a kingdom where only God to live. The kingdom of God, only God to live there. So, are you acting like one? Are are you striving to becoming like one? Are you becoming the source? Are you becoming the source? When we say we love, do we give it, give that love without any expectation? Are we having friends because we know we get something out of them or we get something out of them or we just are there for them out of pure friendship? How do you, how do we treat animals? How do we treat even the plants? How do we value even the things which we say they are non-living things? Let me tell you one thing. Humanity, that density is a primitive density. I will tell you one thing. And if I am wrong, after me giving you this proof, tell me I am wrong. That density is a primitive density. All the beings, all the beings, of second density. They can communicate telepathically. All the beings of second density, they can communicate telepathically wherever they are. The one is in the US and others are here. They will call other birds, hey, the seasons are are changing. Come this side and they start coming. communicate telepathically. All the beings of that density, they are dumb. They can never, they can never communicate telepathic. And then, well, immediately you skip that density when you go to the fourth density. Fourth density, all the beings communicate telepathically. Now, if I am wrong, if I have told you that density, is a density of zombies. If I am wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Why? Just ask yourself, where did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong? It, let me tell you one thing. The truth is that that connection from second density, it was supposed to go like that. It was supposed to go like that. Telepathic third density, telepathic, fourth density, telepathic, fifth density, telepathic, uh, you, now, you be, you, now you become beings of light, fifth density. There's not supposed to be a gap here. What is happening in this gap? People, are you asking yourself questions or not? The other time, I told, I, Sheila, I remember I told you, oh, we are asking ourselves a lot of questions, sensitive questions. If you want to answer, ask sensitive questions. Be in awareness. Always contemplate on things. Stop looking for soap operas and footballs and this. Like, look for things you can contemplate and get revelations. Ask yourself, why is there a gap here? When the second density, everything was going on, then everything uh, crashed in this density. Then again, it peaks. Ask yourself. Ask yourself, why am I here? Why was I born? Yes, I'm told to, to, 
to seek for God. Yes, I'm told to worship God. Why did did I was I hijacked somewhere and brought here to worship something? If I was there seated comfortable, why did I ask anyone to be brought here to to be that I be brought to this planet? I come and worship a God, and maybe or uh, the whole thing of creation is uh, you get abducted somewhere, you are brought here like to worship something. Ask yourself this thing: Why am I here? And if God was alone in the beginning, and He created, is He the one who needed the create? He needed what He created, or is the creation which He created that needed Him? Ask these questions; you'll get grander answers, and you'll be shocked because all these answers are there. Why you are here? Why God? Had a need of this creation. What is the whole relationship between man and God? What is that connection between man and God? These are the answers which we are supposed mysteries which we are supposed to find. You see, so let us. Ask ourselves third density what happened here is because you are struggling with one thing. One thing only which you are struggling with here. You are struggling with love. You are caught up in the dance form physicality physicality are the things of outward people i want to i want you guys to listen to me very 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 carefully anything which you can perceive by your five physical senses they are things of physicality everything and they use the same weapon to make this human dance they stuck us to books i'm telling you this for free all religious books are things of the flesh physicality that the guy who 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 whom we point fingers to that that guy is in flesh is a drunkard he likes women is in flesh let me tell you the same it is the is different seats but it's the same ferry different you are in the same ferry with them but it's just different seats stop pointing fingers at them you are also stuck into the things of the canal to flesh to think of physicality immediately you say my bible my quran hey <laughs> hey finished immediately you say that you're stuck to the physical it is all physicality no matter how holy the book is no matter how holy a messiah was any physical form is of matter comes from mother earth so so this physicality is what has been used to separate us from that which is within which is the one with us that which jesus pointed hey hey people they if they tell you the kingdom of god is at intuapa don't listen to them if they tell you it is in magongo don't listen to them when they tell you it is in this jesus miracle church do not listen to them when they say it is in that mosque do not listen to them when they say it is in the miracle greatest miracle center 
do not listen to them. Because the kingdom of God is within you. They go, they go, disconnected the earth to that which is within. The simplest thing, the only thing which this thing is the simplest getting back within to that which is within. All the time, that which does the, the speaking is not that which does the talking. That which does the seeing is not that which does the looking. Different thing. When you speak, it, you are talking, but that which speaks is the spirit of God within you. I'm telling you every day, no one breathes. If there is someone who is seated, tell me, okay, I finished my job now, let me breathe. Do you know, do you know what is that thing that breathes inside you, of you? <laughs> it is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is God by itself. The Spirit of God is God. It is not a lie. It's not a yes. It's, if it is not written somewhere else, me, I'm telling you, do not even listen to me. Try calling upon it in pure intent and see what happens. See what happens. See what happens. Call the Spirit. In your, at night, Spirit of God within me. Bring me answers to this, this, and that. Spirit of God within me, Christ within me, bring me answers and solutions to this aspect, to this, and to this, in pure intent, and see what happens. Then see what happens. This is what the the, the holy works say. They are called the holy works. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The reason why I'm telling you, try it because it is. Call upon the Spirit. That's it. If, if God is a liar or he disappoints, Ask in pure intent. The reason why you you never get you never receive is you you never ask. You are asking for the God up in the sky. You are asking for the God up in the sky. You have ignored the God. You have ignored God. Let me tell you one thing. <laughs> other forms of God, which we see, this is what is called the other forms of God. All religions are, are doing this. Because there is no church, they'll tell you, people, listen, stop making noise, silence. Everyone go deep within yourself right now, call upon the Christ, Jesus, that Christ within you, call upon the Christ within you. No one church. It will tell you shout, so that it goes up outside the the church, up to the sky, to the heavens. They are disconnecting you. This is why people will be in salvation in religion. Years in, years and years out, they have never experienced God. Because you are seeking the living among the dead. You are seeking the spiritual out of physicality. It is impossible. Infinite can never, something infinite can never be found in the finite. 
Never. Immediately you are outside. People, salvation shall only come to the Jews and not the Gentiles. And he is not a Jew who that is outward. People, he is not a Jew who that is outward. People, he is not a Jew. That one, who is outward, but he is a Jew. That one, who is inward. Salvation shall only come to the Jews, not the Gentiles. People, no matter how holy your books are, if they are outward, forget about it. I'm telling you one thing, eh? Stop acheni madarao. Stop ignoring the spirit within. Stop ignoring the Christ within people. <laughs> Stop ignoring the Christ within you. If you want to find the pure, to know your true self. The pure essence, people. There is no salvation to anyone who is outward. There is no salvation. Salvation is what people are calling us. I am saved, I am saved. Hey. Initially, I said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You call from within, then you get saved from within. And that, that there within where you get saved is where salvation is, where you, when you go within, you are that you. Pure essence. Tila, comment, my sister. Sheila, Sheila, Sheila Toya, Carol. Yes. I'm listening. Yes, Carol. Mm. Comment. Today we are just we just mm. I love that. Uh, that. Uh, um, that love encompasses everything. Uh, so when you when it, it, it is the highest level of being God. Uh, so, um, that is what is very, very profound. I'm back. Terrible. Sheila, Sheila, are you there? Yes. 